Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ella, a first year medic, and in this video I'm going to be talking about learning languages. So I've always loved learning languages and I've been jumping from language to another language to another for a long while. Um, some of the languages that I tried to learn are Turkish, Malaysian, French, Thai and many others. But the only language I managed to actually stick to and I've been studying continuously for two years is Korean. And I think through this period of me studying Korean, I've realized what made me stick to Korean, what made it easier for me to study, and just tips overall that I found really helpful in approaching learning Korean and other languages. In this video, I'm going to be talking about stuff like very helpful websites, helpful apps that I found really good to use, and just overall the steps that I took to learn Korean. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first I'm going to talk about the most most important thing and this is what made me able to stick to Korean and made it really hard for me to learn other languages. So actually I actually noticed this quite recently, I've been learning Korean for two years and then I decided that maybe it was time for me to try a new language. So I thought about learning Malaysian and I tried to learn Malaysian for a bit but I found it really really hard to grasp the vocabulary and the grammar and just how to memorize the vocabulary and that's where I understood what the most important thing is to make learning a language easy is that you have to immerse yourself in the language before learning it or during the first week that you're learning it. It's so important that you immerse yourself in the language to extend that it sounds normal to you. It doesn't sound like something alien. The ways I would recommend it is, for example, watching videos or YouTubers or drama series in the language that you're trying to learn. What this means is that you will become much more customized to the sounds of the language, the way that they speak, the common words that they say quite a lot. Even if you don't look for them consciously, your brain will just catch up on them unconsciously and it will help so much in just understanding the dynamic of the language and how it works. This as such will help so much when you start learning the language. And when I look back to the languages that I tried learning before, like Turkish and Thai, I've always had this issue where I would just go into the language because, oh, it sounds cool, let me just start learning it. But I would never actually try and immerse myself in the language beforehand and that made it so that when I started learning it it was really complicated to just get my head around everything sounded so unfamiliar so alienized so this is what I would recommend and this is what I actually did with Korean is I've always loved k-dramas and listening to like Korean music so it just made it so much easier because it sounded familiar to me and that made it so much easier to study it and same thing with Japanese as well which I've been studying on and off for a while now because I like watching anime and I've watched a few Japanese dramas it just made it easier for me to get a grasp of the language at the stop. If you're thinking about learning a language, then the most important thing is to familiarize yourself with that language. Start watching some dramas and this will make it so much easier to grasp the dynamic of the language and continue learning it. Now the second most important thing to do is to kind of give yourself a schedule, give yourself a timeline that you think would be realistic for learning the language. Obviously when you give yourself a timeline it's really important to not overdo yourself, think about the other commitments you have in your life. But it's also important because you will find that at the start you're really motivated to learn the language. So for the, for the first like month you're going to be banging out like learning all the grammar, learning all the vocabulary. But the moment that the motivation starts to die out a bit, this is where you'll start meaning off learning the language. You'll find that you're, you're not allocating as much time as you used to for learning the language. So what's really important is that you kind of discipline yourself and schedule yourself from the start. This will prevent this peak at the start, but then the gradual decrease until you decide you just want to stop learning the language. So discipline yourself is really important. For example, if you're using a certain textbook for learning um, the language, then perhaps you could say, okay, I will do three Three lessons a week or if you're doing it by vocabulary then perhaps you can say okay I will learn 50 new words a week and if you do this gradually you'll find that you can actually reach your target consistently and you won't have this huge spikes or decreases in your motivation to study so I think it's really important for you to make yourself a schedule and set realistic standards for yourself don't say I'm gonna do like a, a thousand on words a week that's too much and you find that you won't be able to juggle learning the language around your life. Scheduling yourself is really important. Now these are the main two things that I would say you should do before learning like, or when you're starting to learn a language. Now let's move on to Korean in specific and how I studied Korean. So the first step that I would recommend, and this is what I did, is to learn the Hangul. It's really important to start with learning the alphabet because some of the sounds that 
come out in Korean words or just in the Korean alphabet, they can't really be imitated using romanization. Also, a lot of materials that are dedicated to Korean learners are just in Hangul. And so if you learn Hangul, you'll find that you're widening your spectrum much more in terms of this resources that you can use to learn Korean. In terms of the actual grammar and the lessons, I use how to study Korean for the first few lessons until I reach the intermediate section. How to study Korean is really helpful because it will start teaching you the grammar but it doesn't only focus on the grammar, it also focuses on a bit of the nuances and what is usually said in day-to-day -day language. So it just makes it that you don't sound awkward when you're speaking, basically it focuses a lot on how people speak in Korea in a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really helpful in getting the grasp of the language at the start and I would definitely recommend it when you're starting. However, what happened to me was when I reached intermediate level and I started doing the more complicated lessons, I found that how to study Korean got a lot more into the much more deeper nuances and the idioms and I for me, I wasn't planning to really go live in Korea or go work in Korea. It wasn't part of my plan. I was just learning Korean for fun. I wanted to be able to have a conversation that was like straightforward and quick. So I found that I was getting a bit too much information for what my goals were. So then I decided to start using Talk To Me in Korean. I found that Talk To Me in Korean was really nice in that it had really straightforward lessons. It would just go through the grammar, what the rules are, how to conjugate, how to use it, some example sentences, and that was it. And I found that really helpful for me, especially in the later levels, because that was really all I wanted to do. I also didn't have as much time as that was the time where I was applying to uni and I had mocks and like six form exams. So I decided to go for Talk To Me in Korean instead and I would also really recommend it. Usually I would just use the PDF because it was a quick way of doing the lesson, but there's also a podcast for each lesson that would tell you how to say the words exactly, how to say the grammar functions. This is also an option that is not available in how to study Korean. So what I do with the lessons is I would just write notes based on what the lesson material is, just write down the examples and try and comprehend it. Usually when doing the lesson I would kind of say the words out loud or I would try and create sentences in my mind which would help more in making the grammar rule sound more natural and remembering it. Now for vocabulary, what I would usually do for vocabulary is use Anki or Quizlet. I haven't been using it as much lately, but Anki has been really helpful in learning vocabulary. Usually I just browse Anki and see if there's any decks that anyone has put, and I found quite a few that were really nice. One vocabulary deck that I really enjoyed was Korean Vocabulary by Evita. I don't know if if I'm saying it right, Evita, Evita. There's also Korean grammar sentences by Evita. So this one was really useful because the deck was basically just sentences that you could just read and try and guess the meaning. So it would just be practice for your book grammar rules. Now also using Anki, something that I did with grammar is quite similar to what this deck is, but because I noticed that when I write notes, um, for the different grammar rules, I wouldn't really go back to them or I would just remember them for the one to two days after I did the notes but then I would forget them. So something that I did was now make a deck where I can put the grammar rule, the title and then if you flip the card you would get all the notes on the grammar rule and I would try and do it every other day so that I can just remember the grammar rules and actually use them in real life. So that has been really helpful, I've already noticed a big improvement in remembering the more complicated grammar rules. Now, what are the ways that I really like to practice Korean or just pra reading the practice or listening practice? So obviously I've already said this, but I really like watching K-dramas. So what I started doing, this was mainly focused on improving my accent. What I started doing is when I would watch a K-drama, I would pause after what an act like after the actor says something and then I would repeat what the actor says, trying to say it as close to what he said as possible. So I think this improved my accent so much. I've been doing it for a while and I already feel like the way that I pronounce consonants and like words has improved so much. So it's a really helpful method. Another thing that I did is I downloaded the Webtoon Neighbor app. If, if you guys don't already know, then there's a Webtoon app that is just in English and it has a lot of Webtoons that you can read. But there's also a Webtoon Neighbor Korean version of the app. I think this is the original version. And it just has all the Webtoons, but they're all in Korean. So at the start, when I started doing this, it was really difficult because I literally didn't understand every other word. And what I would do is I would have like a notepad beside me and I would write down all the words that I didn't know while reading the Webtoon. It would just take me so long to read it. 
but my what I have to say is you should just keep doing it and just keep like persevering because right now it got to the point where I can read a webtoon without actually having to look at translations that much so it definitely pays off I would recommend starting with webtoons that are a bit more simple for example high school ones and um, that don't really involve a lot of complex words instead of like reading a fantasy one or like an action one that has a lot of those fancy you know more difficult words now in order to practice speaking i feel like speaking was much more difficult for me because i didn't really have a lot of friends who could speak korean i had my brother who was also learning korean but because we were both learning it it wasn't really that helpful to speak to each other but something that i did with speaking is just speak to yourself so just stand, stand in front of the mirror and start speaking to yourself in korean perhaps like you could explain your day so you do like a daily journal thing where you just stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself about your day stuff like that and i noticed that you actually pick up much more on the vocabulary that you don't know but the vocabulary that you don't know that you're actually going to use much more because if i find that i can't say something in my head that i wanted to say then i know that this phrase is a phrase i'm going to want to say more often so it was really helpful in kind of picking up on the words that i want to say more often and learning them now another amazing way that I discovered recently to practice speaking is using an app called Hi Local. So Hi Local is an app where you have cafes. They're like spaces where people just join and they speak to each other. So you can choose what language you want to learn. And some cafes are even led by like a teacher who does an activity. For example, one of the first cafes that I joined was like a 50-50 activity where there was a Korean teacher who would do things like do this or do that, like would you rather this or would you rather that? And it was all in Korean, but she was so helpful and encouraging. It's a really nice like way to practice speaking if you don't have a lot of Korean speakers around you. And I really like this app, especially because of just the concept of safety i always felt a bit iffy about going to other apps where you would have to like actually speak with the person and like text them if you wanted to voice chat them but in this app you just voice chat in any activity and you don't really have to like say a lot of stuff about your like private life so i found out that, that was really nice and i felt a lot safer and just overall it was really enjoyable so yeah these are the main ways in which i learned korean just a quick summary, make sure that you learn the hango before. For lessons like grammar, I used how to study Korean and talk to me in Korean. And for vocabulary, I would just find decks online. Another thing that was helpful is also searching like the most, the 1000 most common words in Korean or the top 500 most common words. This would be helpful and then you can make a deck out of it. With K-dramas also, like if you watch variety and reality shows, they're really fun as well and you can improve your Korean. There's also much more natural speaking. Um, it compared to K-dramas are scripted. Then for practice, you can do things like repeat after actors in K-dramas, speak to yourself, use high local or reading webtoons or like reading books. And children books would be really nice as well. If you could find a children's book in Korean, that would be nice for beginner vocabulary. So yeah, that's it for how I learned Korean overall. Make sure, as I said before, that you try and immerse yourself in the language is really important. And that you set yourself a schedule so you don't burn out or you don't just suddenly lose motivation, then you don't want to continue doing it. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any other video ideas, make sure to comment down down below. And good luck in your language learning journey. Make sure to like and subscribe and bye.